Hey, what's up, everyone? It is Frank Andrews, and this is the OK Tulsa podcast, episode Cinco. That's five. Today is October 8th, 2020. The first thing I want to address is what occurred last night when I was attempting to go to sleep. First off, there is an annoying train. I believe it's a train. The sound goes, it's so loud. It's been happening nonstop throughout the week at all hours of the night and early morning. I don't know how I anyone's able to sleep, really. I think at a certain point, you just ignore it. But it's horrendous. Just when I thought it couldn't get any worse with, like, first, the weekend, you have to deal with the individuals at the bar, and then now you have to deal with the train noise. The bar noise was quieter than, than the train noise. It's, it's ridiculous. But there were some individuals that woke me up later in the night I didn't have headphones in and I heard screaming, screams of anger and some sorrow and sadness. And I looked out my window and there was a woman uh, beating her, I'm assuming her boyfriend, it could have been her husband, I don't know. What I got from the gist of it was that he, I believe, cheated on her and she was beating him. Thankfully, he didn't hit her back. He was trying to walk away and she just kept hitting him and screaming. I don't know what ended up happening. I saw them walk away. But that was that was pretty intense. But yeah, so that was for my night. But I woke up this morning. I just ate breakfast, whatnot. Stayed at the I did a lot of the work at the apartment. I was planning on going to the office, the co-working space later on, but I got really consumed with work. And then I went on to Twitter and I have to unfollow a certain local Tulsa accounts the the news accounts is there are news stations radio stations that are like local small ones because all their tweets are just two things this is only this is all they post things related to covid and horrific murder things related to covid horrific murder things related to COVID, horrific murder. And it's all it is. All these people, I'm like, okay, I get it. Like, okay, COVID, yeah, I see it. Um, Horrific murder. It's always about like these people killing their children or something that's, and it's like these these things that they have are horrendous. It's like a a father raped their child or something. Like, I was like, oh my gosh. Another one was like a man who mutilated his animals and ate their hearts out. And I do not want to know about that. So I unfollowed but what I did see was super annoying was there was a person I think she was a local politician or ex-politician and she retweeted I was following her but then I stopped following her after a while because I saw that she was just she was being a politician and a one-sided kind of person everything she tweeted about was just really uh one side politics I'm just trying to get off it but just to touch upon this annoying fact uh this one is I don't like politics or talking about it but that she retweeted a tweet about some woman. Her tweet said something along the lines of this. And I'm not joking. I'm not exaggerating. The lady said that she had never been more proud of her parents than today. She said she saw her parents, who were lifelong Republicans, vote for Joe Biden. And she cried tears of joy. How in the world is that your most proud moment of your parents? Have your parents had, were your parents that terrible parents that they have the expectations that low that you cry tears of joy when they decide to vote for a man who clearly has dementia? My parents voted for a, a dementia patient who used to be a corrupt politician and can't form a sentence and constantly makes slight racist remarks. Shall we mention when he said that poor children are just as smart as white children? I mean, I get it because the other side is just as bad, right? Like, okay, you have two choices for the the greatest country in the world. So we say we have someone who suffers from dementia who has been in politics his whole life, a corrupt politician. Then we have a reality TV star host who's orange and is clearly a con man. 
and that is who we are trying to vote for. It's just, it's absurd. But anyways, I don't want to talk about that because I don't really care. I mean, they both suck and the government doesn't really care about the people. But that was a ridiculous post that I saw. I can only imagine what psychoanalysts psycho would think to have that sort of patient as their patient to be like, wow, uh, your parents are terrible parents if that's your most proud moment of them. Like, yeah, whatever. So there was that. And then I went to post a post on Instagram because I'm trying to post consistently because I heard that that's, you know, what you're supposed to be doing if you're trying to promote is to constantly post. Gary Vee says you should post 100 times a day. That seems uh, superfluous. I think that's way too much, but I think that would be annoying. But that's what he says. And he's clearly, he knows what he's doing. He has millions of followers. He has a successful business, etc., etc. So um, I went to post, and then of course, what I saw, sorry about that, um, what I saw was uh, more of these Instagram models, and I started to think like, I mentioned this in my previous podcast about uh, what parents should do for the kids, and it's, I really am just bucking down even harder on this, is that if you're, if you're a parent and you want your child to succeed, and have a great life, right? In terms of wealth, freedom, be able to travel, be able to do whatever you want, buy them plastic surgery, buy them a fake fake ass, give them stuff a bunch of um, shit in your lips, make them really huge and puffed up, take provocative photos of yourself and you will be rich, have people pay you and get to travel around the world and have people take you out that is the way and the thing about that too is like what what are parents how can parents have a debate about what the kids want now right they see that uh they the women see the instagram models the kids see the tiktok stars or the youtubers etc what what are they going to say like what what arguments do they have to say well you have a more fulfilling life if you go to college and get in debt probably for the rest of your life uh get out of college and make about forty to sixty thousand dollars and in a job you probably are not going going to like around people you don't really like um from years you're going to bounce around a job to job perhaps you stay in the most year or cap out around is if you're lucky is around a couple hundred thousand dollars a year um if you're if you find some luck you find somebody to marry you and have a loveless marriage and have some kids you kind of hate you go on vacation every now and then which the vacations never live up to the expectations you take a few photos and act like the vacation was amazing. You go back, go back to your job and your life and you say back to the real world. And then you post another photo later on saying, wish I was there, wish, I miss it, wish I can go back to whatever it may be. If you're lucky, you retire, have some, uh, some money to live off of and your kids have some kids or you have grandchildren who you can spoil and make up for all the help, make up to be, uh, since you're such a terrible parent, now you can be a good parent to the, the grandchildren. That could be the life. Like, is that really a fulfilling life working in nine to five at a job you don't like forever? Like that's the argument the parents have to tell their kids or would you rather um, dance in front of a camera and get paid hundreds of thousands of dollars or if you're a woman, but uh, why not be like a young girl who sees these people? Okay, you can be an Instagram model if you're somewhat attractive and you decide to stuff plastic surgery, um, stuff fat into your ass and unpath plastic surgery and take provocative photos. It's like, and the thing about it too is the individual who set that up is arguably the, arguably the most influential cultural icon of our generation, whether you want to admit it or not or like it or not, is Kim Kardashian. And how did she become famous? She literally made a sex tape. Then she got a show and then she made provocative photos. She sold books, took selfies, of, which contained nudes. And so in a way she broke the taboo of women being naked in front of the camera. Like it's not uh, a thing to be shameful about anymore, right? I think there's that other individual who was a, a stripper who dated Wiz Khalifa, who has like this not slut shaming, whatever it may be. And so it's like this taboo's erased. Obviously all these Instagram models, it's a thing, I think there's a, something that's even called OnlyFans. It's practically like a webcam site the women are using now too. So it's like all this kind of idea of 
of trying to shame a woman about that is it doesn't exist anymore so no girl feels like a shame like some of these photos years ago if someone saw these it, they'd feel like kind of embarrassed about them that they came out in public but now they're sharing it to a bunch of random strangers a lot of creepy people right but once again how can you blame that person because they say okay well i can just take photos of myself there's no public ridicule or shame it's not a, it's not a taboo anymore and People send me clothes. People are offering to take me on trips, right? And what life, their life is they get tons of money. They get to wear these nice clothes. Uh, they have men take them around all around the world. Sure, they may have to suck off a few gross guys or Saudi Arabian uh, oil tycoons or whatever it may be. But then they will eventually find a wealthy man to marry them when they're in the late 30s or 40s, live a life of luxury and probably into being like some sort of business owner later on when she gets older. Like that life is probably more fulfilling. So it's like the parents don't have an argument anymore, really. But what I find annoying about uh, all of that is I saw this one uh, girl who had a, they're all the same, you know, on the Instagram. And she had like the bios. There's always ones that everyone always kind of pokes fun at, which is, the ones where they have this really deep philosophical quote or they pull something from something they read of these con these endless self-help gurus and people read the books and they use one of those quotes they found in brainy quotes and it's this deep quote but then it's just a picture of them in a bikini and says something along the lines of like law of attraction it's like yeah law of attraction it's working for you people are attracted to you um something like that or like think positive and things go well or some some shit like that right but there's another one that I saw recently and some some woman wanted to thank her followers. I think she reached a pinnacle of like 10,000 followers or something. And she said, I'm so thankful for all you guys. Uh, continue to follow me to see more creative as I'm, to see more dope and creative shit or something like that. I'm going to keep making dope and creative posts or content. And you want to be like, just how is that dope and creative content you're just take the like, creative in how you're posing what like at least just say i will be releasing more provocative photos of myself in the future if you follow because at least that's telling the truth instead of saying like could you imagine if you were telling somebody oh a friend a coworker, a family member whoever whoever it may be like uh i'm on instagram i follow this really a uh, cool person she makes dope and creative content and you send a profile of this instagram model all she is is just in bikinis and occasionally she'll have a photo of her wearing clothes looking off into the distance at some nice uh you know vacation destination always showing off an expensive handbag and taking a candid photo right or kind of slowly seductively looking over while wearing designer clothes something of that nature or all the rest are just her in bikinis or post for corporations or companies who are sending her things. Could you imagine if you said, this is a person who's making dope and creative content? So I thought that was laughable. Um, but yeah, so that is uh, absurd. But I mean, we live in a, the current climate is very odd, of course, in America with politics and everything. That's something that's normal, but even in, uh, the celebrity world and the art world in regards to music. There's a man, I guess, that calls himself the baby, and there's another baby guy too. Um, Cardi B has a hit song with a horse in which they both sing about their genitals being wet. Like this is, that's the kind of world we're currently in. So I can't really, uh, I understand why everything, the way, everything, I mean, on, perhaps we'll be doing the world do us a favor if the super volcano does erupt in Yellowstone or an asteroid does hit us at this point. I mean, it's 2020, anything can happen now, right? I also saw some posts on Twitter about somebody removing, uh, opening up a mummy coffin. I just thought that's ridiculous. Could you imagine? Like, we find, could you imagine if somebody just now go, digs up someone in the cemetery and opens up the coffin? 
just like let them be I get, but whatever uh anyway back to anyways back to where I was at my story in regards to something regarding Oklahoma so I was planning on going to the co-working thing today got consumed I was supposed to have a free lunch because it was a member lunch I looked up the food truck place it was called Red Soul the food wasn't that enticing I don't know if there's a full menu online they only had five items I believe and it was four of them were just tater tots with barbecue sauce on them and some other shit and I was trying to eat a little healthier because I've been eating quite badly this week in regards to you know the burrito from Elote Cafe and a burger from Cicero's and other things of that nature so uh, I wanted to try to eat something better so I didn't go plus I was I went on my slack uh, if someone's not familiar with that it's like a chatting site for businesses use it or various like these co-working spaces use it they have a slack you have channels you can message people and whatnot and there's one that's a community one and there was an issue regarding someone wanted to complain about the mask people not wearing masks but the thing is at this spot they handle it really well you wear a mask when you go in it's like anything else stay six feet apart if you're at your desk and you're not living with that person and whatnot you can take your mask off wipe down your stuff afterwards with lysol right people have to work you don't have to go to the co-working space but some man wanted to complain about it and thinking that they're not doing enough and complaining that he didn't see people wearing masks and things of that nature and then someone mentioned that they're making sure people are staying six feet apart and following the rules and he was saying that it spreads indoors and then it's like if you're that concerned why are you there someone mentioned that too and i had to give that guy a thumbs up it's like he said he wanted a virtue signal i'm like maybe he just wants to control people that one just frustrates me like i get it and in regards to like if you're worried about it about coven then but if you're that worried and that concerned, don't go. And you're wearing a mask. If those people aren't wearing masks, who cares? If you're already upset with them because they're not doing it and you wanna be in control of them, have power over them and tell them what to do. Like, I don't know. If you're that upset with them, you should be happy. You should be wanting them to get COVID, right? At that point, if you're that mad about them not wearing masks, like, who cares? Like, I think it's all about individual responsibility. Let the people decide. Don't try to tell people what to do, but that's my own opinion about it. So I was quite frustrated with that because it was like, it was just, once again, it's just, this kind of stuff is ridiculous. The mask have become such um, another thing that's dividing the country. We're already extremely divisive right now, divided. There's a, it's just the mask are divisive. They're like another political point. And people are even more upset with each other now because it's always like, there's two sides two camps and then I feel like a majority of individuals were in the middle like yeah we're aware we understand but at the same time it's not it shouldn't be taken that seriously like I feel like most people were in the middle but then you have these two extremes where people want like the people who are so concerned about it like put yourself in a fucking plastic bubble never leave the house then some people have to leave the house but if you don't have to and you are so concerned be like Jake Gyllenhaal be like John Travolta put yourself in a bubble be the boy or a woman in a plastic bubble don't let any germs touch you, right? But if you're not, like, let people take their chances if they're not concerned, I don't know. It was, and then there's the other individuals who say, like, no mask and all that and think, some of them even are, like, part of the David Icke conspiracies, right? That even think that COVID's completely fake and you're just like, okay, that one's way too extreme because clearly it's not fake. Maybe overblown, but it's clearly not fake. So, I don't know, those, both sides are just absurd and it's just more reason to divide the country. But yeah, so back to my story. So I didn't want to really go because I was quite annoyed. I ended up going later, wrote up a blog and whatnot, and it was fine. It was nice when it's late because it's even more empty. You kind of just do what I want. You kind of can just, you know, have a little more free roaming space. You don't have to feel so much like bothered or in someone's space or making sure you stay six feet apart, that kind of thing. But I decided to, I was very hungry, I got consumed with work, but I didn't want to leave and go out and try to find food and search and scavenge. So I went on DoorDash, because I haven't used it in a while, and I thought, oh yeah, maybe I'll, maybe I'll just DoorDash something, that would be great, wouldn't it? It had this promo co code that was 50 oct us, something of that nature, and along those lines. It was supposed to be 50% off. $20 or more 
for new accounts and I assumed that a new account would be just a new email account so I was thrilled that it was going to take advantage of this. I quickly hopped on, went to local restaurants because I wanted to support a local restaurant and try out something that's local, right? Uh, I found, I was perusing and scrolling at a uh, rapid pace and it happened to land perfectly on this beautiful picture of an over-edited salad. And I thought, yum, that looks healthy and good and light. I'll look, check it out. I checked on the menu, found, they had a bunch of things. It was called Cool Greens. If you haven't had it, I wrote a blog about it and it is phenomenal, it's tremendous. The, I ordered multiple things because I thought I was going to get 50% off but it turns out that DoorDash recognizes phone numbers. So if you're trying to make a new account, have multiple phone numbers because the email accounts, email addresses doesn't matter. It said I was not a new account. So it didn't give me 50% off. I, I was really hungry. I did all this work already, so I just paid for it. But I got a salad for dinner and lunch. I had this sandwich and salad's not that good. I had a cob salad. It, I did medium dressing. I should delight. The dressing is very strong. Yeah, it didn't, it's not good. It's too pungent and like, like a vinegar kind of taste. It's sour. Uh, but the sandwich was this chicken fresca sandwich. It was the best thing I've had since I've been in Tulsa. I wrote in detail about it on my blog, I don't get Tulsa if you're really curious, but just for a quick summary, I'm not exaggerating or even near joking when I inform you that new evidence has come out recently in regards to the famous Greek myth of Prometheus being chained on a rock and having an eagle eat his liver out every day and having it regenerated, etc., because he stole fire from the gods and gave it to the mortals aka us humans um turns out that he actually wasn't really punished for the fire they really didn't care that much about the fire what they cared about was the chicken fresca sandwich from cool greens this was heavenly this was sublime this was this really was something for the gods this i can see this being a favorite dish an entree maybe even served like a little platter mini size on Mount Olympus. It was divine, it was heavenly, it was splendid. The side dish was, I, it wasn't, it was okay. I liked it, but it wasn't amazing. I like to do something unique every single time when I do side dishes, something that I've never tried before and I probably won't ever eat anywhere else. And this one was a uh, curry couscous. They have like chips and pasta salad, but I saw curry couscous, that sounds interesting, I'll try it. I'm a fan of uh, Indian food and Pakistani food, and it, it uses a lot of curry or turmeric, and it was very pungent. So, like COVID mask, this dish is very divisive as well. You're you're either going to hate it or love it because I can see people hating it if they're not used to. It. But the sandwich itself, is amazing. If you're not vegetarian and you're you will eat chicken, it's phenomenal. The avocado. They had a basil 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 <laughs> basil mayo basil mayo spread that was on the bun that that spread utterly sublime utterly sublime i was in a cheery mood which is rare i'm typically a cynic but then i felt light on air i felt like i was walking on sunshine whoa 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 and it felt damn good And then I took that pocket of sunshine and eventually it got squashed. But at that time it was it was there, it was, it was nice. So I ate that, I felt very, very thrilled and ecstatic and just so happy at that moment. You know, when you eat something good and feeling it was, it didn't, it didn't sit in your stomach where you feel like you eat and you have to like lay down to sleep. No, this one felt great. And I called about the library cause it's, it's so close to my Airbnb. It's about five minutes, it's like a five minute walk even less if you hit this, the crosswalk perfectly. I called, it said it was open. I signed up for a library card. 
I walk there, it's the building is inside is beautiful. If you've ever been to the Tulsa's, uh, if you've ever been to Tulsa Central Library, um, I highly recommend recommend you do. Unfortunately, they only have two floors open, but you can still see and you can see how wonderful it looks. It's I would love to go whenever the COVID restrictions are are no longer like in place because it has like these balconies, it has some cool statues. It's very big, open space. Uh, yeah, it's it's nice. And so anyway, I go in. The lady, I believe her name was Trisha. I want to say that was her name. She was extremely helpful. Shout out to Trisha. She was kind. She helped me out through all of this. I, what I really wanted to do was I was trying to rent, uh, obviously check out some books, but I really wanted to see Carl Jung's uh, Red Book, which they had there. I don't know if I mentioned this, mentioned this on the podcast, but the book itself is very large. It has a lot of photos. Um, the writing that he he writes in before he turns back to English, I think, was it had to be his native language, which is Swiss. He's from Switzerland, I believe that's where he's writing in. But the photos are are marvelous and wonderful. The red book is Carl Jung's uh, Adventures into the Soul. If you can decipher it, you pretty much can figure out the secrets of the soul. So of course, I wanted to find this out and I wanted to see it. And it's it's amazing. They had it on. You can't rent to check it out, but you can research it. And luckily for me, they allowed me to look at it for like an hour and I could take copies and take photos. But what was interesting about that area is I think because it's by the courthouse, there are just a surplus of crazy homeless people over there. One went in, I went to go to the bathroom and I was in the stall. This man, I'm not joking when I tell you that he sounded like a demon. He was, he sounded terrifying. I didn't, I don't know what he looked like, but eventually security, I think, got him. I think, I'm assuming that's the guy, but he was, he had this deep voice and he was pissing next door, next to me. There was a stall and then he was, there was a urinal. He was in the urinal and he was making these weird noises. He was, had a very deep, you know, uh, voice that was a lot of mumbling and cursing. He was in pure ecstasy when he was pissing and then he was complaining about the hand soap and then I heard him in Starbucks and I felt bad I heard like a young girl like trying to talk to him and he was just, like cursing and wanting something but um yeah I went in to, to go browse around some books because the Trisha was going to help me find books that I placed on hold I got my library card today too after I just signed up so that was wonderful and marvelous and I guess my books were in the basement she was going to ask about the research book about the red book for me so I came, I went, saw some books, found it, whatnot, came back down. I saw her pointing, there was like three or four security guards that came and she pointed uh, quietly at someone at, around the corner. So I'm assuming it was him because he wasn't, it wasn't like, the thing about this, if you're listening, if you're not familiar with homelessness, there's different levels of homelessness. There's certain people that they're homeless there, they fell on hard times, they still have their, their head about them. And those are the people you just like, you can actually have a conversation with, like I met one today who wanted to know about the library, who's a jolly guy, he was nice. I was like, oh, you can go in, there's bathrooms, you can look right on a book. You can go in for like, to use the internet. I thought you could go to sit down because I was on the phone earlier and that's the whole reason I went out originally to check out some books and to do work there because the Wi-Fi and the Airbnb is terrible. You can only run one device. It might be like 10 millibytes per second, whatever that is. It's not meant for multiple devices or streaming. But it turns out you can't. She's unless you're on the computer. Otherwise, you can just browse, check out, do copies, but you can't sit down and read. But yeah, so there's different levels of homelessness. There's some that are just plain. They're completely schizophrenic. They're violent. They're impulsive. You don't. They're not fun to be around. And that was that guy and another man outside. I walk out and he's he's completely shirtless and he's he's puffed up. And breathing hard and uh, he reminded me of like the Hulk the Hulk because he had these jean shorts and he was just walking back and forth extremely angry and yeah he was acting crazy and screaming at nothing but today I got my shipment in that I shipped to myself which contained not only my journals but my little stunner the shock weapon which it's amazing because it, you just feel safer with it 
you don't have to actually fight anyone if there's someone that feels threatening you just have to you can either shock them or if you just have the little button and it, the noise and the sound and you see the it's like tesla coils that kind of idea when you see that it's already it's like terrifying enough to keep people away so i highly recommend that because pepper spray is too dangerous in regards to you can injure a lot of people and yourself if you're in an enclosed space i know tons of friends who've had it and they've always each every one of them some of them did it to themselves they wanted to see what it was like and they just sprayed it in a room like if you spray it not at yourself but in the bath in the bathroom that's closed it will get in your eyes and it will burn i heard i heard it's one of the the worst pains so i just think it's very dangerous and you can misuse it and it's just this other one's easy it's in your hand you could stun somebody i recommend it to anybody who is who lives in the city or if they have to walk a lot by themselves especially women unfortunately my sister has like i had she finally got one because uh, back in california too like she couldn't even walk in a park she eventually got a dog it's a little better but just trying to walk take a walk by herself there's there's multiple times where men in trucks were like following her and that's just that sucks it's re it's really bad it's unfortunate and it made me realize more like being around my sister I'm like oh yeah life for a woman's a lot different from a man i've never had an issue in regards to where I was walking back then in the park with somebody trying to follow me, right? Chase me around in a car. I'm just trying to enjoy a walk during sunset. But yeah, so highly recommend that for people and it's less than $10 on Amazon. Just look up like stun guns or something. It'll come up. But um, yeah, so I had that, went to the library, came back, decided to go to the co-working space because I wanted to, to do work. I wanted to blog about the food I ate at Cool Greens. Then I spoke with my brother, he called. He lives in Oklahoma City. He was inquiring about possibly visiting, which would be awesome. And he just wanted to check up on me. I think if he comes, that'd be really fun. I don't know, he hasn't ever really been downtown. And it's, it was nice So. uh, yeah, I'm starting to figure my way out a lot. I'm loving those lamb scooters. They're addicting to ride. They're extremely fun. And I'm getting a hold of it, getting a hang of it now. I feel way more confident. When you first ride it, you feel like scared. You don't want to fall. You're hitting bumps. But now you just, you know how to ride them. You know how to, to not fall. Maybe I'll get too confident though and I'll end up eating it. I hope not. But if you are riding those, word of advice for people I've seen I've seen this person almost get hit the other day is people fly on these scooters and they forget that cars don't really see them till last minute. So if you're going to drive past any of those parking garages, just start slowing down just in case. Because yeah, I nearly saw somebody get hit. That would have been bad. Um, I think that's really all I planning on talking about today because yeah, I don't really know I don't really know what else uh, my Airbnb host is coming through once again she's planning on washing my sheets and towels which is nice because the Airbnb does not have a washer and dryer but she didn't have to do that but that's amazing that she's doing that for me it's going to help out and then Tomorrow, I do want to go out and do something. I haven't decided about the opera or the concert. I may try to go out. I don't know if bars open. That's the weird thing. Like, I think they're open, but I don't know how that works. If anyone can inform me, that'd be fantastic. It just seems like an odd thing because are people, there's no way that's like, like, do they, is it just mask for show? You take the mask off, you drink your drink, put the mask back on, and you're like uh, surrounded by people in a nightclub or a bar? Because they're clearly open, but how does that, how's it working? I may, may see. I do want to do this wine tasting. There's a vintage wine bar, and there's a rooftop bar in May, at the Mayo Hotel. I don't know if it's open. I want to try that, but I really want to go to, the, to this. It's called the Vintage Wine Bar. I saw it the other day when I thought possibly I may have a date or something, but I, I want to try like these cocktails that they have in 
wine, but they have like a dinner special that you can reserve and they pair food with beverages like wine and they may have like pair it with other alcohol as well as well and I've always thought that'd be pretty dope I've always wanted to have things paired I've only had you know one time not one time but like this whole experience I think is like they give you a little taster of wine with each dish so you get multiple pairings versus previous times I've had like dinners and people have recommended something and it really does make a difference or you know wine tasting we get to try a bunch of wine with like different cheeses but never like a full-on uh, dinner where you have multiple courses small plates with small tasters and you get to pair and try all these things out that seems amazing so I want to do that but it just seems like a weird thing to do by yourself and I have zero luck with women in regards to dating apps therefore maybe if my brother comes next week and I'll take him even though I don't think he's into it but I think if I pay he'll just be fine with it We'll see. Or if any of you are listening and you want to go with me, hit me up. I'll take you. It'll be on me. So I want to do something like that, or at least try some sort of cocktail. I saw this cool hipster looking liquor store at this popular spot. That'd be cool to try to get some bourbon or whiskey or some kind of drink that they recommend. I've been trying. I haven't drink. I haven't drink. A, I haven't actually drink alcohol in It's been a while, like, yeah, maybe New Year's. I think I had my brother made some mead, but that was about it since New Year's. Actually, Hawaii, but that was in January as well. So it'd be interesting to try some. That'd be cool. So maybe do that or maybe go to a park, the gathering place, maybe it's nearby. I have to go to UPS sometime this weekend because I have tons of Amazon returns I have to return. And there's no UPS downtown, so I can't walk anywhere. So I have to take an Uber to go to UPS. And UPS will not come to pick up my packages. I set up a pickup and they do not come. Dang you, UPS. Dang you. I may check out an office space tomorrow at the Phil Tower. Because it just seems like less of a hassle going forward in regards to like the co-working space. I don't know how much it's going to, how long it's going to persist. And if who knows with everything with like COVID, right? But if you, just have, if you just have an office to yourself, then you really don't have to worry about other individuals. You can just do whatever you want. And I can actually have a, actually have a place that's nearby. It's just closer to, it's in the Deco district and it, it will be right by my apartment. It's far easier. I love riding the Lime scooters, but it's just not practical in regards to money-wise. It's just, yeah, too expensive after a while. I'd rather just walk, but yeah. We'll see. I am supposed to meet with the woman tomorrow morning. She has been terrible in regards to customer service. She forgets to reply, or she takes forever to, to reply or her emails are like text messages. The last email she sent me did, didn't have any punctuation or even capitalization. And it's not that big of a deal, but it's like, okay, this is the face of your business. So I don't know how great it's gonna go tomorrow, to be honest, but we'll see. Maybe she will surprise me. Perhaps she just didn't have uh, email etiquette there's actually a course in college that you have to take, at least for business administration, in which you have to just, just learn how to compose emails. That's all it is. It's a ridiculous course and you're paying money for that. Or at least the state is. I also watched, well, I started the movie today when I was eating dinner. I forgot the name already. It's with Wes Anderson. It is with Steve Sazu. I think that's the character's name, but Bill Murray is the main character. It is, I don't recommend it. It's okay. So far it's okay. I still, I'm not even halfway through. It just seems quite odd, but most Wes Anderson films are, but I like them. I like Rushmore. 
Real Tenenbaums is okay. This one, yeah, it's not my favorite of his. But if you have good movie recommendations, please send them my way. But anyways, thank you for listening. I will speak with you tomorrow. Have a great night. Love you all. I feel like I have to tell, say one more thing, but I can't remember. I don't know. If I remember, I'll just say it tomorrow. Peace. Thank you for listening. Like, subscribe, share. Send to everybody you know and who you even don't know. Just spam people. Perhaps rent a plane, spell it in the air. Watch OK Tulsa podcast. That'd be nice. I'd appreciate it. Well, anyways, goodbye. This is Frank Andrews. This is the OK Tulsa podcast. Bye.